born um, and raised on Wuthering Country. My mum was, um, she was removed at the age of four from a um, Dimbola River, where she was at the time, with my auntie who was eight and placed in the Ballarat Orphanage. So she was raised in the orphanage in Ballarat. You know, I did a range of different sports uh, growing up, the likes of netball, softball, and um, decided at a reasonably early age to, to focus on track and field. One of the, the special experiences that I had was competing at stall. Um, and being in the final, I really, really wanted the opportunity to, to win it, but it didn't happen. I ended up placing fourth, I think it was. But it was special because my great uncle was the first Aboriginal man to win the stall gift. And at that stage, um, he wasn't acknowledged as the winner. Uh, Uncle Robert Kinnear. Um, so that was competing in a space which had such history. Yeah, I love sport and it's given me all of the pathways that I've been able to create through work. But more importantly, it's given me the characteristics and the learnings about what I need to do to get the best out of myself. I studied to be a teacher. I went on to run programs that looked at traineeship pathways, education and training and employment pathways. Um, after working um, with an organisation, a sister organisation of the AFL, AFL Sports Ready for five years, it was, I guess it was an opportunity to build um, a facility or a, an institute that had a unique and a, a unique range of opportunities for young people, or for Aboriginal people generally. Um, there's no other facility with an Indigenous focus like this that has been funded to engage Aboriginal people, particularly in the AFL, um, and to provide pathways around education and training, support leadership development, um, and opportunities into employment. There's, there's two ways to look at leadership, I think. One is um, in the historical sense of, of what leadership can be, and that's one person out the front leading the charge, and then there's leadership from a range of different ways of, you know, from a cultural perspective, it's quite different for Aboriginal people um, in getting behind our mob and supporting them to um, take the direction they really want to go as well. Mm -hmm. People follow leaders because they believe in them, um, or they have the same shared values, and, you know, I still, I still think it's, it's odd to be called a leader. I hope that what I can leave is a reminder for people that how beautiful our culture is. And for non-Aboriginal people, I'd really love them to, I guess, describe me as somebody that made them think differently, made them think differently about our people, and I would hope, I hope that I've been able to get them to, to fall in love with us as First Nations people of our country and in essence fall in love with their own country because there's a story that's not told in its richness to the way in which it should be. Look, I, when I spend time with young people I feel really optimistic because and I'm talking about young people collectively, because there is a, an openness and a willingness to, to do the right thing, you know, to influence change and do it straight away. Um, you've got to have faith. You've got to have faith in the others that will lead the generations to come. But we also need to ensure that we have ceremony that brings us together. I, I, th I think what the fellowship has done has provided me with an opportunity to spend time with other Aboriginal leaders. So to have that chance to um, learn about how they've kept going and being resilient and um, patient and kind to themselves. Often this space you can feel very taxed at different points in time. That's because you, you want it so badly. Mm -hmm.